In this video you will learn what is GitLab CI or continuous integration and how you can use GitLab Jane for free. And the first question here is obviously what is continuous integration? And here is a really nice example how it all works. As you can see on the left we have some developers who are working together and they are doing different commits in different branches and at some point they want to create new releases, so they are pushing some changes to origin, source control, for example GitHub or GitLab. And as you can see, after they pushed their changes, our changes are getting directly to continuous integration. Here is update, and after this we have this process inside circle. First of all we have a building of the whole application to check that all new features and new code is working. After this we can run different commands, for example tests, linting, whatever you prefer. If our tests or building step failed, then these users will be notified and we won't have a new build. If everything is green, then we are getting new successful build and everybody are notified that new version is available for deployment. This is essentially the idea of continuous integration. We are continuously pushing changes, our changes are checked and then our code can be continuously deployed. And now you for sure think, ok, but I can live without continuous integration, I can simply run locally my build step or tests and I am totally fine. Obviously yes, it is working like this, but if you have more developers, then people can forget to run something locally. For example, they didn't check a build or they didn't run tests, then some pull request was merged in master and now master branch is broken. We want to avoid that and continuous integration helps tremendously with it, because we are running all our checks on remote machine and we don't need to do anything about it. Which brings us to GitLab, and what is GitLab? This is just a project where you can remotely push your changes. But it also has a feature which is called GitLab CI or GitLab Runner. This is the idea that we can for free, even in private repositories, push our changes and then run some commands, some testing, so our code will be checked remotely. And this is exactly what we want to set up. So what we want to do here? First of all here I already prepared create react app application. And it doesn't really matter what code, language or framework you want to push to GitLab and check, it will work with any framework. But this is just for testing, so here I have an empty react application. First of all, we must push to GitLab our project. This is why here as you can see I can create a new blank project and let's name it here Monster Lessons Academy GitLab CI. Here we must select a namespace, as you can see this is a private repository and I just click create project. So our project is created, now we must bind it to our local repository. This is why I will copy paste from here this URL and jump to the console. At this moment you can have two different things. Either you already initialized git repository like I did or you didn't. In this case you must write git init it will initialize empty git repository and then you want to add all your files inside git. This is why git add dot and then git commit. And for now just for you to understand how it is done, I will make some changes inside my project. For example here inside index.js we have a console log gitlab ci and we can just remove some text here. After this we are jumping to the console and we want to add our changes with git add dot and then git commit minus m, for example gitlab ci. I am hitting here enter, our commit is ready. Now we must add remote repository to our local repository, this is why git remote add origin and here we are pasting this URL. After this we can directly push this branch to master, this is why git push origin master. I am hitting here enter and as you can see my changes are pushed directly to master branch inside GitLab. Let's check this out, I will reload the page and as you can see we don't see our changes. This is happening because locally I have master branch and here we have main branch that was directly created for us. So what we can do here, we can change our main branch to master branch as a default branch and we can do it inside settings and here we must click repository. And here on the top we have default branch and we can select here our master branch. Now as you can see our master branch is default and all our changes are successfully pushed to GitLab. Our next step is to configure GitLab CI runner. This is why here we must create a new file inside our project in the root. 
and this file is called dot gitlab-ci.yaml and don't forget dot at the beginning, this is important. And here we want to define two different things. First of all, we have stages and secondly, we have jobs. So what are stages? This is just steps of our building process inside CI. For example, first stage is building, then next stage is testing, then third stage may be linting. And inside every single stage, you can have different jobs. This is why here, let's create two stages. First of all, inside stages, I want to define our build stage. And secondly, I want to define test stage. And after this, we want to create some jobs. For example, here we have a build job and we want to say in what stage we are using this job. This is why here stage will be build. We define this stage on the top and here we must say image node. Why that? Because actually GitLab Runner is using Docker inside and it means that every single job is completely isolated inside a container and the whole code is built there. This is why here we must provide for Docker the image that Docker must use. And after this we are providing script and essentially script is just a sequence of our commands. So first of all here I want to write echo start building app. It will help us to see later in the logs that our script is running. After this we want to call npm install because this is completely empty image and we must prepare all our dependencies and packages inside. And after this we want to try and build our React application with npm run build. And the last step here will be to echo something about success. This is why here let's write build successfully. So this is how we're creating our jobs. And now I want to copy paste this build job because we need essentially the same for test. This is why this job is test, stage will be test, our image will be also node. And here we have another script. First of all here, start testing app. Now we are calling npm install and instead of npm run build, we can write ci true npm run test. And after this, testing successfully. And most importantly, as you can see here, we're calling npm install second time, because every single job is isolated completely and we must install all dependencies again. So what we defined here are stages and jobs. Now we simply must push our file to remote inside GitLab and everything will work out of the box. This is why here git add dot and git commit minus am, for example, GitLab CI YAML. I'm writing now git push origin master and our changes will be pushed. Let's reload the page now. As you can see here on the right, we have a running pipeline. This is why here on the left, we can jump inside CI CD pipelines and here we can see our running pipeline, which actually means we directly used GitLab CI and the pipeline inside CI is running. Now here on the left, we can click on this running status. And as you can see, these are our stages. So inside pipeline, we have stage build and stage test. And we have just a single job here, build and here test. And you can have a lot of jobs inside a single stage and you can run them, for example, in parallel. But here, what is interesting, we can click on this job and then we will see nice logs of our application. So here we're getting lots of information. As you can see at the beginning, we see the usage of Docker inside and here we have our image node that we defined. And what is interesting for us is this line, echo start building app. And here we can see where our scripts are started to run. After this, we have npm install to install all dependencies of React. And after this, npm run build is called to check if we can build our project. And at the end, we are getting echo build successfully and and here job succeeded. After we have this, our job is passed and we can jump directly back inside pipeline and we see that it is still running because we are inside second stage and here we have test. As you can see now, all our jobs are done and everything is green. At this moment, you must get a notification, an email from GitLab that your pipeline was successfully built. If we get a failure, then you will get an email with an error. So this is how we typically define jobs and stages inside GitLab Runner. But what you want to ask now is why we are writing twice this npm install if we have the same set of dependencies and this is highly inefficient and super long. And you are totally right, it doesn't make a lot of sense. 
Actually it is because by default you can just try it like this and it will work out of the box and you don't really care that your build is taking like 10 minutes. But obviously you can optimize it and you can share between your jobs, for example node modules folder. And typically you can do it in two different ways. First of all let's look on caches. What we can do here we can write cache as the root property. Here we are defining path and here what we want to cache and we want to cache node modules folder. What it does after this npm install node modules will be cached and will be reused in all our jobs later. This is important to remember. We use cache only to store temporary files between jobs. We are not using it like artifacts. So what is artifacts? This is something that you want not just cache but use later. For example you are building scripts like JavaScript and CSS can be an artifact and after CI prepared them you can use it on production. But here is the problem. Actually I tried to use cache and cache this node modules folder with create react app and it didn't work and my build was broken inside CI and it was happening because of ESLIN dependency which didn't exactly work correctly inside CI. What we can do instead we can remove cache here on the top and use an artifact for this. And yes it might be not the best usage because typically we use artifacts for some results but it is really worth working in this case and I don't see any problem with it. This is why what we can do here after script we want to write artifacts. And here we can define expire in one hour. In this case we know this artifact is not there for long. And after this we also define path in exactly the same way. And for example here we can say build and also node modules just like we did for cache. In this case these two paths will be stored automatically like artifacts. And then later we can reuse them. But here is the difference. We should not write here npm install at all. Because it is not cached. In this case we will simply call this command again. With the artifact this node modules folder will be directly there available for us. Now we can simply commit our changes and check if it still works. And now we can simply push it to origin master. As you can see here we had a new pipeline with added caching and both stages were completed successfully. And the last thing that you must keep in mind is really awesome. Even if we will try to create a new branch here for example foo feature and we will make some changes in our new feature branch we will see these changes inside pipeline. For example let's jump inside source index.js and here we are working on our changes so I will just update here console log. After this I want to add our changes and commit them to this specific branch so work in progress foo feature. And after this we want to push our changes to origin foo feature. I'm hitting here enter and our changes were pushed to that specific branch. What is more interesting now we will have a new pipeline which will be running for our foo feature. So it is not only for master it is for any branch. And this is extremely important. We will see checks for our code in any branch. And secondly when we will try to create a merge request from this foo feature to master we will see our pipeline is going there. And it is extremely important because it helps people people who are checking your pull requests to see if the build is successful and if all tests are green. In this case we will merge this pull request only after our pipeline is ready and it is green. Obviously here you can merge it immediately and not after pipeline succeeds but this is not the best method. And actually if you are interested to know what is the difference between GitLab, GitHub and Bitbucket and what service you must use for you make sure to check this video also.